Hello. Today we celebrate the baptism of our Lord. Today's festival rejoices in God's blessings. We recall and celebrate our adoption as God's children, the gift of the Holy Spirit, and the promised company of Almighty God when we pass through the waters, the rivers, and the fire. On this day, the heavens open again, and we receive the gift of God's beloved, Jesus. Let us begin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Join to Christ in the waters of baptism. We are clothed with God's mercy and forgiveness. Let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning your spirit moved over the waters, and by your word you created the world, calling forth life in which you took the light. Through the waters of the flood you delivered Noah and his family. Through the sea you led your people Israel from slavery into freedom. At the river your son was baptized by John and anointed with the Holy Spirit. By water and your word, you claim us as daughters and sons, making us heirs of your promise and servants of all. We praise you for the gift of water that sustains life. And above all, we praise you for the gift of new life in Jesus Christ. Shower us with your spirit and renew our lives with your forgiveness and grace. To you be given honor and praise through Jesus Christ, our Lord, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, you anointed Jesus at his baptism with the Holy Spirit and revealed him as your beloved Son. Keep all who are born of water and the Spirit faithful in your service, that we may rejoice to be called the children of God through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Holy Gospel of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ according to St. Luke the third chapter. As the people were filled with expectation and all were questioning in their hearts concerning John, whether he might be the Messiah, John answered all of them by saying, I baptize you with water, but one who is more powerful than I is coming. I am not worthy to untie the thong of his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand to clear his threshing floor and to gather the wheat into his granary, but the chaff he will burn with unquenchable fire. Now when all the people were baptized, and when Jesus also had been baptized and was praying, the heaven was opened, and the Holy Spirit descended upon him in bodily form like a dove, and a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, the Beloved. With you, I am well pleased. The Gospel of our Lord. Grace and peace be unto you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. I'm greeted by it every day. The electronic signboard on Market Street between St. Mark's and Sides. That signboard projects a host of messages and images that catch my eye as I cross the Market Street Bridge into Williamsport. But the one that really spoke to me the last couple of weeks was the ad encouraging people to become a personal caregiver, the image of a woman offering personalized care to another woman with the phrase, make an impact. Today in the life of the church, we celebrate the first Sunday after the Epiphany, the commemoration of the baptism of our Lord. A careful reading of this event according to Luke, our reading for today, 
tells us that the phrase, make an impact, is the message Luke wishes for us to understand concerning Jesus' baptism and our own. Unlike Matthew and Mark, Luke isn't very concerned with describing the event of Jesus' baptism. He hardly mentions it. Verse 21, now when all the people were baptized and when Jesus also had been baptized, that's it. There is no Jesus wading into the water. There is no conversation between John the baptizer and Jesus. There is no Jesus going under the water and coming up out of the water. None of that. Only the phrase, when Jesus also had been baptized. It's not that baptism is not important to Luke's telling of the Jesus story. It's not that in Luke's community, which came into being between 80 and 90 AD, baptism did not have great meaning. We know that's not the case because of the story of the Acts of the Apostles, written by Luke as a sequel to his account of the Gospel. It's that the addition to the event that Luke wishes to emphasize what happened after the baptism, how baptism made an impact upon Jesus, and then how Jesus made an impact. Baptism should be the same for all who follow Jesus. For Luke, Jesus' baptism was not an event that happened and should soon be forgotten. Listen again to verses 21 to 22. And when Jesus also had been baptized and was praying, the heavens were opened and the Holy Spirit descended upon him in bodily form like a dove. And a voice came from heaven, you are my son, the beloved. With you, I am well pleased. After his baptism, Jesus engaged in prayer. At prayer, Jesus is anointed afresh with God, the Holy Spirit. Be careful here. Don't misunderstand what Luke is telling us. Luke is not saying that Jesus did not possess God's Spirit from the beginning. He is not saying to us that prayer is some sort of magical porter that opens to us the God channel. He is not saying that only when you pray you encounter God. Luke is telling us that baptism was a significant event in the life of Jesus that reinforced his understanding as to his identity. Remember what Epiphany is all about. Pulling back the veil. Revealing God. Aha moments. When I was a boy, a Roman Catholic friend of mine often referred to the visit of the wise men as the little Christmas. The understanding that as the shepherds praised and worshipped Jesus at Christmas, so the wise men did at Epiphany. Looking at the baptism of Jesus according to Luke, a good description might be to apply the same understanding. The baptism of Jesus is a little Epiphany. The veil is once again pulled back. The baptism of Jesus was for him a beginning, not an ending. It took place only once, but as we see, its significance was for a lifetime. It had an impact, and because it did, Jesus made an impact. So what about us? What about our baptism? Our baptism should be significant to us, to our faith walk, to our story. Our baptism should encourage us to pray, to be a reminder that God's Spirit has embraced us and has made us children of God. Not we might be children of God, not if only we do certain things and refrain from doing other things, but we are children of God. God's grace is not conditional or optional. We're the ones who make it conditional. We're the ones who make it optional. Baptism tells us of our identity 
and gently pushes us to be God's light in an often dark world, to give to Lutheran disaster response or to volunteer, to reform our society so that profit always takes a back seat to people's needs, to look at public service as exactly that, public service, and not as a way to obtain public power and oppress others. At the beginning of our time together today, we publicly gave thanks for our baptism. Our baptism is not a dedication. Our baptism is not our first step in some decision theology. Our baptism is a means of grace. It proclaims that we are God's children, part of God's new creation. Our baptism declares that we are loved and drawn into God's self. Our baptism makes an impact upon our lives in order that we may make an impact in the lives of others. When we remember the saints on All Saints Day, those who kept the faith, those who were the faith, we often incorporate the saying transferred from the servant church to the triumphant church. As it did for Jesus, so it does for us. Baptism begins our servant journey and empowers us to impact our world with and for the gospel. Amen. Let us affirm our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. By the Holy Spirit, let us pray for all people in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Lord God, you reveal your love and power through water and the Spirit. Guard rivers, seas, and all bodies of water from destruction and pollution. Secure access to clean water for all and protect the land from drought and flood. Establish among the nations the blessings of peace. Raise up leaders who will protect vulnerable people in their care. Strengthen advocates who risk reputation or retaliation for the sake of mercy and justice. You protect us through the fires and troubled waters of this life. Assure us that we will not be cut off from you by illness or despair, anxiety or pain, confusion or weakness. Comfort all those who are in need. We are joined in the baptism of Christ to one another. Bless those who are newly baptized and those who are preparing for baptism. Help us to be faithful in fellowship, worship, evangelism, service, and justice-seeking. You created each of your saints for your glory. We give thanks for those you have called by name into your eternal embrace, especially Blanche Dobler. Comfort us in grief and release us from fear. Since we have such great hope in your promises, O God, we lift these and all of our prayers to you 
in confidence and faith through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Just a word that weather permitting, we will be in person next Sunday, January the 16th. Until then, stay safe and know that Christ is with you. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen.